The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we're off uh, nine points, although we did get down to 2,900 on the S&P cash. Still off 150 on the Dow. Let me update that just to make sure. Sometimes that one doesn't update. No, nope, it's updated. 150 on the Dow. That's a negative, negatory big, uh, what was that? CB, thanks. Wouldn't big daddy. Big something. Uh, we'll have to think about it. Anyway. Off 150 on the uh, Dow 30. NASDAQ still off 24. Russell's up three and a half. And of course, there's always that thing where anytime we get a little bit of news, uh, thinking the trade deal isn't going to be there. And of course, you've got the kids in the back seat going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? Uh, it's going to take a while for this thing to uh, uh, get done. It's not happening overnight, no matter what anybody says. I understand the uh, uh, yellow German, uh, journalism on the uh, major cable channels has to kind of carry it because that's, you know, you got 24 hours, you got to fill it with something. And uh, they've had to give up on the uh, collusion thing. So now eh, maybe they can get another jet crash like ML. What was that the one over there? Something else. They're going to get something else that they can beat like a, a dead horse. Uh, but until then... They're going to go round and round and round on this stuff. Uh, and it doesn't make it happen any quicker. Maybe even keeps it from happening uh, for a little later, maybe, because all the attention. If it probably didn't have any attention, probably like these whack jobs that go out and shoot up places, they probably wouldn't have as many. Um, anyway, and I'll get off my soapbox, although I like being on it. Uh, I've actually never seen a box uh, that was uh, one I could stand on that contained soap. But uh, maybe maybe someday I will see one. Uh, anyway, we're waiting again for earnings out after the bell, so we'll talk about that today. Um, really want to look at what the volume is doing. And again, we went lower. We've got significantly better volume for a couple of times lower. We've got about 4.6 billion shares as we start the show. This is a kind of about where the volume should be. Um, my guess is that we're going to see uh, continued selling until we get through some of these bigger IPOs. They need to sell shares now to raise cash uh, for shares uh, into uh, next week. So, you know, if you're a dog, haven't performed, you're probably for sale. Uh, if you've been running hot lately, eh, they're probably not the first ones that are going to sell. They're going to sell the dogs at least right now, because they don't have to. This isn't like uh, the stock market's already down 10 or 15 percent, and then they don't want to sell. The, they don't want to sell their uh, losers. They want to hold on to them and sell their winners. That's a little different than this. Uh, but we've got uh, Uber coming up on the 10th. We've got a handful of other uh, IPOs. I think when I saw it, uh, there was uh, maybe 10 or $12 billion of IPOs stacked up. I don't know how many of those are actually going to make it to market. I've been trying to keep an eye on it, but uh, they're pretty closed-lipped when things aren't going real great. Uh, if they're oversubscribed, they're yelling and screaming out on the street corner. But, uh, you know, Uber had to be dropped down by 20 25%. Uh, to uh, get uh, people to say, enough people to say, okay, that they could go out and push for the rest. Um, but again, it's still a lot of money. That money's got to come from somewhere. And right now, 
kind of going to come from selling probably maybe half or maybe even more. It's going to come from selling uh, stocks that probably, uh, you know, if you're going to get rid of a dog, this is probably a good time to do it and get maybe a faster horse than an IPO. Uh, maybe it'll move and make your uh, numbers look a little bit better if you're a hedge fund manager. Um, yeah, just yeah, like Brexit. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen when it happens. I just don't understand the whole uh, uh, trying to avoid it kind of thing. Why not just get out in front of it? But, you know, I guess that's why I'm not a politician. I just couldn't stand there and do nothing. Um, but uh, that's me. Okay, so, uh, oh, I was going to go back to a few other things that I want to look at. Of course, we saw the dollar spike. It's up only about $0.09 cents today, 97.50. It's still, you know, yesterday uh, and the day before looked like you could get the kind of power to go hit 100. Looks to me like the uh, Treasury Department and the government, uh, the bankers are all in here trying to keep the dollar from moving too quickly. But it certainly looks like now to me that it's more than likely uh, in this higher trading range and above 97 now that we might slip all the way to par or 100 on the uh, dollar index, kind of a psychological thing more than anything else. So uh, what else do we have going on? Uh, looking at the, uh, you know, we've got some things that were pretty horrible. We got some earnings uh, from last night. And like I said, we'll talk about earnings after the bell tonight. Uh, we'll do a little history and then we'll get into all of that. Uh, one of my favorite patterns is starting to show, uh, show up in earnest. We're going to go through as many of those as we can today also. But uh, first, we've got to do a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Yeah, that's what it is. Good buddy. I couldn't remember it. I thought it was big buddy. Eh, you never know. On this day in history in 1972, near, after nearly five decades, as director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, J. Edgar Hoover dies, leaving a powerful government agency without the administrator who had been largely responsible for his existence and shape. Hoover came to the forefront of uh, federal law enforcement during the so-called Red Scare of 19, 19 and 20. God, we need him back now. We got a bunch of filthy Reds back. Yeah, just... A little bit of tongue-in-cheek there, folks, but not too much. With all good humor, there's a bit of truth in it. The former librarian set up a card index system listing every radical leader organization publication in the United States and by 1921 had amassed some 450,000 files. And, uh, man, you wonder if how all those FBI files ended up in the White House. Mm, people and politics... That's the problem with the FBI, is that sometimes it's used for political means to an end. He certainly was one of those folks, had a lot of blood on his hands, uh, from Martin Luther King to uh, the, uh, the Kennedy brothers. Boy, did he have some stuff on them. Man, if you ever read about that, it'll turn your hair white. And I like my hair the color it is. On this day in 1972, the kingmaker, the guy that knew all the palace secrets, died. And people have been trying to be like him since then. We'll be back after this. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're off uh, five points on the S&P cash, down 120 on the Dow. NASDAQ's now down off about 13. So getting a little bit better. We can't uh, allow this market to sell off. Uh, even if you're only going to make one thin dime, you've got to buy the dip. Got to buy the dip. As I uh, have been talking, uh, there's a pattern that I watch for uh, that generally tells uh, the end of a uh, big uh, continuing market higher, and that is Joe DiNapoli's double repo pattern. Uh, his research from using some of the earliest PCs, which was actually a CPM machine when I talked to him, very enlightening how he did a lot of this stuff, but it's, are there better things? There kind of is. The, I got my machine learning models but probably the best way to show it uh, and for people to do it at home uh, is this. And that is uh, generally you have something uh, like a three by three displaced moving average, which is just uh, three days put off into the future. So if we took the last, uh, at the close today, we took the last three days and uh, averaged them uh, and put them out three days, that would give kind of a line that goes out past today. You can actually, when you see it, you can see the three days here as I'm pointing to it. Um, and you know kind of the ballistic curve. There's nothing magic about moving averages. And I, I hate to even bring this up sometimes because I, I really kind of despise moving averages. It's just that the shorter moving averages do kind of make a ballistic curve uh, that you can trade against. Nothing magic about it. Uh, and certainly if you start doing the longer moving averages, you'll see how the longer they go out, uh, kind of the exact same thing as uh, the longer the forecast for the weather. Uh, it becomes more and more meaningless. I guess that's why the short ones at least have a little bit of uh, validity. But they, it, when you get into this kind of pattern, uh, it does kind of show you that if you continue to get light volume at highs, it does make a very good pattern. Uh, anyway, you get your baseline, and that is from the three by three displaced moving average, or a nine by uh, or a nine day moving average, uh, something kind of short. In fact, 
not a lot of difference between a six and nine day moving average when you actually go back and test it, by the way. I could use shorter ones, uh, but kind of the same thing. They're not that different. What you are looking for is 10 to 15 days above moving average, a little dip below it, a handful of days below it, uh, above it, and then a decidedly uh, significant um, candle that shows you that you've got a reversal, at least short-term reversal. The next close underneath that line is the signal that that stock or market is tie, uh, has uh, topped out. We got that or a little bit today in some of the ones that we're looking at. I'm watching, or this one right now is Avnet, AVT. It's a distributor of electronic components. Um, I'm going to do as many of these as I can. Maybe I'll run out and we'll get to some of the other stuff. Didn't really know how long I had. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. Car part, CPRT is another good one. Um, now, what you really want is a more significant swing that I'm showing in this one. And that's why I showed that AVT one first. Much better looking, um, much better swing. But here's another one that I, this is what I like to see. In uh, Equifax, you've got it great. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 days above it. You go a handful of days below it. You get like three days above it. Yesterday, you get the reversal back underneath it. And as long as it stays underneath that, uh, you know you've got a good chance if the market turns sour to make some big dough. Uh, the projection for the double repo is back where it started. So on Equifax, if this continues and then accelerates, we get a little volume maybe Monday, Tuesday, next week, because of course we're still in quote, quote, fun buying and we're lower, which is never a good signal in the market. Yesterday, today, uh, if you can't rally I'm going to say 20 points now in the S&P cash on a day during fund buying, the second of the month. Uh, there is some weakness to it. Uh, anyway, you got your uh, close below it yesterday, continuation today, and you kind of just let that one show you what happens. But generally, the way that these things work is they kind of start off slow and then get fairly steep fairly quickly. But uh, that would be a nice trade, 125 issues where you got your signal yesterday that would take you back to where this thing started which is about 110 not the end of the world but a fairly nice trade if options uh, are fairly cheap fairly interesting and of course you got the option of hitting the next couple of days where we actually start to sell off and had major sell-offs in may but generally they start about the fifth so we're maybe just a little early uh and that i got a whole bunch of them Last night, my scans kind of also tells you something, but we're close. But we maybe still have a couple of days, and that may be uh, with fun buying over. Let's see if we've got anything else here. Well, these are a handful of ones. I wanted to see how they did. I want one here. Here's another good one. Global Telecom and Technology, D-A-G-T-T, -T is the uh, symbol on this one. Uh, so, in fact, I want to do this. I'm going to just flip this over uh, for you people who do not have art of timing trade charts. Uh, maybe you do have something that shows a three by three displaced moving. But if you're not, you can kind of get a nine day moving average and it's kind of the same thing. Pretty close. Actually, a little bit smoother. So sometimes your uh, entry into these is just a little bit later. Um, but this is exactly what you're looking for. Uh, starting on the 29th of last, of actually March, uh, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You get the reversal candle up there that's a huge bearish engulfing of the day before. You come back underneath it. You stay underneath it for four days. You pop back above it. You don't get any kind of significant volume uh, as you do. Uh, this is on the 26th of this month. You get four days above it. You get kind of a reversal yesterday without a lot of volume. And generally, this is a pattern that does develop 
without a lot of push either higher or lower until you close back below this day. So there's this is I've seen this work so many times at the end of big runs in stocks that I'm always watching for it, even though if it only happens every once a year, or even once every two years, I continue to look at it. Happens a great deal more in commodities than it does in the stock market. Not exactly sure why, but anyway, this one's right at that level today. But uh, uh, if you continue to kind of see this curve move lower, uh, is interesting. But this takes you back uh, at about 41 bucks to about 34 bucks where this actually started back on the 29th of March. We'll do a couple more of these. We'll go into some earnings after the bell. Down five on the S&P, down 122 on the Dow. NASDAQ off uh, 14. Russell just up one and a quarter now. Crude finally cracked down two bucks. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we'll get back to looking at a couple of charts. I just want to update this, what I'm working on here. Just give me one second. Uh, there, I'm playing with a spreadsheet here. I need to delete that. After the bell tonight, we've got Activision Blizzard, ATVI is a symbol on that. Weight Watchers, has uh, anybody watched uh, what's going on with Oprah? She lost weight, gained weight? Changing the symbol, WW, if you haven't followed that stock lately. But uh, if she lost weight, then Weight Watchers probably going up. 
Uh, if she continued to put on weight, and eh, WW probably going lower. Novavax, uh, Gilead Sciences, Shake Shack, which I never really thought much about, but uh, I guess people in the coast that are very trendy like uh, that, In or Out Burger and stuff like that, eh, we're kind of normal people down here in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, we don't cotton to those high-priced burger places. Uh, United States Steel, which, of course, uh, the mob was bigger than, if you listen to uh, Hyman Ross in The Godfather 2. Planet Fitness, Expedia, Arista Network, Skyworks Solutions, uh, Fortnet. I think Skyworks is going to be important today because it's going to tell us about what they're thinking going forward. Probably one of the better companies to uh, think about uh, what the future of 5G is going to be and what they say in their earnings call tonight. Tableau Software, a uh, symbol on that is data. First Solar, I haven't looked at that one, FSLR. And that, and then we'll get back to our double repos already in action. Um, yeah, doesn't look good, does it? Uh, back to maybe 58 on this one. Uh, there's a lot of talk about spending money on uh, green energy projects, but I don't think that there's really the kind of appetite for that in the Senate. May uh, All the wishful thinkers maybe in the House will push on it a bit, but I don't see where there are a lot of those uh, green um, incentives are probably going to go through for either electric vehicles or uh, some of the other fly-by-night ideas like solar power that we've had, you know, money into for years, still hasn't come up with any solution that's actually economically viable yet. I know people don't like it when I say that, but I guess you got to be a financial realist if you're going to be a trader. You can't be a wishful thinker. Monster Beverage Corporation, GoDaddy, Viking, Herbal uh, Life Nutrition, uh, El Poco Loco, and Mercado Libre, Beezer Homes, CBS. Anything else out there? Eh, not that much. Uh, and then, of course, uh, tomorrow morning, let's go ahead and get down to that. On Friday, American Tower, another company I'm going to be interested in for telling us about what 5G or 10s for them. Got to be a lot more smaller antennas. Uh, we've got some down here that they've been putting up uh, in this area. I've talked about it on the Tech Insider uh, half hour with Tom O'Brien a few times. We've got some that are just down the street from my house. Uh, Johnson Outdoors, uh, CBOE Global Markets, Noble Energy. So I don't think there's anything really that could move the market tomorrow. American Tower would be just interesting in that sector. Probably a little pin action with Qualcomm. Uh, going on in that, too. On Monday, we get back uh, in the morning with Cisco, Bosch & Loam, uh, Tyson Foods. Eh, I don't see a lot that moves this Monday morning either. So we'll get back to uh, this already in progress. Uh, am I still there? There we go. Uh, give me a call at 877-927-6648, especially if you have any questions about double repo patterns. Anyway, um, one that's kind of setting up here that you want to watch for is for solar. Um, again, we're going to go do another one. But this is the first day underneath after having about 10 to 15 days above it. Then you get a couple below it, a couple above it, and then the next move, ne next move down underneath that nine-day moving average or three by three is when these things start falling apart. This one probably does have fairly decent support at 57. Uh, Guidewire software, a good, another good indication of one that just really is going to close today underneath that uptrend line. Again, you want a couple of days below it, a couple of days back above it, and then the next close below it is when you pull the ripcord and you start getting the real destruction. Um, there is one else that I wanted to look at here because we got a bunch of these that just dipped underneath yesterday. HEI, kind of a similar thing. Uh, this is Heiko. 
Um, the one I wanted to look at that I thought was the most important in all this bunch uh, was the S&P Equal Weight ETF, RSP. Um, you certainly uh, had a handful of days above and below, and now yesterday and the confirming one today suggests that there will be pressure on the S&P for a while. Uh, the target uh, would be where this thing actually started back up above it, and that's back to about 103.50 on the RSP. Are my charts working? No. The uh, that's what I was going to say. The uh, hotcom thing blew up here. So uh, let's do this. Boom. Um, let's close that. See if I can't restart it and see whether or not it works again. We can get everybody on it. Okay. Hey, hopefully everybody can see it again. I'm back in the den. Everybody can get me hooked back up and show these charts. We only got about a minute left in the segment. Anyway, the equal weight ETF, uh, the close below with a reversal candle yesterday and today uh, continuing to get up there right to that nine day and then fail and come back down to 107 suggests that you will have uh, a fairly good shot at seeing this back at about 104 and 104, uh, 103.50, back in that range on the S&P. Now, again, that may take a little bit. This may be one of the slow rolls at the highs, but a combination of going into the summertime, uh, the IPOs coming in and sucking all the oxygen out of the rest of the market, uh, being stuck right at the highs without being able to get uh, a trade deal that's promised by the yellow media, the yellow journalists, yellow newspapers. They were yellow. That's what I remember. Uh, the yellow journalists always saying it's tomorrow. And yeah, I guess there's probably a little bit too much from the White House about talking about it, too. I always wait, like to see the cake when it comes out of the oven. I don't want to hear about it cooking. Anyway, that's just me. Anyway, you can tell me why I'm all wet by giving me a call at 877-927-6648, emailing me at path at tfnn.com, or putting it in the, uh, yeah, no sound in the den. Huh. Uh, well, we'll get all those technical issues fixed during the break, and we will get back on it. CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And just getting something, an uh, email off right there as we go. Um, okay, anyway, we were talking about Rydex. Uh, again, not a monster move back up here. And given all things, I'd probably be a little bit more bullish. But um, I just have seen the markets top out uh, with IPOs sucking so much money out of the market um, fairly quickly. And, of course, being up here on no volume doesn't make me feel uh, real uh, warm and fuzzy uh, as we got here. Uh, let's see what else we have. Someone wants me to look at IBM. And, uh, eh, you just had your drop for earnings on there. Uh, you know, you got one big gap up. You got another big gap down. Uh, I don't know. This thing kind of gappy. I kind of stay away from those. Um, but I don't think that there's a whole lot in IBM for probably a couple of years. And uh, that's problematic. They're basically putting all of their eggs in one basket, and that is quantum computers. And uh, Mr. Shore and his algorithm uh, are all about what uh, IBM is going to be in the future. Shore's algorithm is. Uh, is what's really going to make machine, uh, not machine, but uh, make uh, quantum computing work. And that's basically what IBM's now put their entire future and bet on. Probably not a bad bet. It's just uh, going to take years to come to fruition. Uh, but Shor's algorithm is uh, making a guess uh, at, uh, you make a guess. And you know it's probably not going to be right. Uh, but then you can make a much better guess uh, on the next time around, not just randomly make guesses, but a very clever algorithm that shortens the time frame down, uh, sometimes uh, millions of times. So it can take a very complex problem and make it almost instantaneous on a... a uh, quantum computer when those do come out, but yeah, I just, I'm not feeling it. Um, you know, they're probably going to sell a few to the NSA right off the bat because literally they will be able to crack everything that went through. Uh, and there's a long precedent uh, for that. And of course, uh, the NSA built that giant facility to save everything for years. When I put it up a year and a half ago, two years, something like that. I mean, this thing's a, a monster up there in Wyoming or somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and one of the reasons why Western Digital and Seagate still had some good years in the last couple of years, because that one place bought every hard drive that damn near that they could make. Uh, now, of course, they're busy filling those things up. Uh, but after the Second World War, same thing. Even if they couldn't break it, they kept it. And then they would break it later, and that's how they found out we had so many filthy, vile tra 
uh, traders. Uh, you can look up the Venona. I think it's the Venona papers uh, for that. Is that right? I think it is. Or is that the nuclear explosion south of uh, South Africa? Yeah, I'll have to remember. Uh, Utah, thank you, in 2014. Well, I think it didn't get finished until 2016. I think they actually they had that up there. Anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that the history of the CIA and the NSA has been to save literally everything because you'd never know when you go back and find those things and you can break them almost instantly how many traitors and spies you will find in your midst in those papers. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, take a look at some other stuff out here. Uh, GLD, want to take a quick look at it? Yeah, it just looked like uh, some market gas from the Fed speech yesterday. GLD still above 120 which doesn't really change anything over the last couple of days, other than it's kind of hanging around in this territory. Adobe is one of the stocks uh, that I think has given the first, one of the first signals. It went up on uh, ADBE, right? ADBE. Okay. Um, went up on no volume for a while. I mean, the last day of volume was a gap down in, on earnings, and they still pushed it up. Uh, they guided down, and everybody on the street said it's still going to the moon. Um, I always wonder about people that, when the people at the company tell you that it's not just going to be bad, but it's going to be horrible, and they keep on saying that they're, oh, they're just sandbagging. They're just telling us that so that we won't put the earnings estimates up, and they put them up anyway. I, I, aren't they just kind of acting, uh, asking for a train wreck? I think that's kind of what's happening in Adobe. It, probably not that bad, but certainly looks like it could get back in that $260 range uh, with a uh, issue here. Now, again, um, we're back at the point where we're, this is going to be the first real day in a while that we're going to close under a nine-day or three-by-three three, uh, day moving average. Uh, and then you probably get a couple of days below it, a couple of days above it, maybe a spike back to maybe 285 or something in the first couple of days of next week that also uh, shows a giant reversal. I mean, you had many signs here in Adobe. Uh, the first one was this doji on the 29th of April, uh, and then the huge bearing, uh, bearish engulfing uh, that we had yesterday on this. Now, there wasn't a lot of volume, and that's why I'm saying at the very beginning of these patterns in this double repo that signal a lot of tops in the market, that you don't get it right off the bat. These things do pop back above briefly with no energy. Then the next big, uh, the next close underneath it, that's when you want to pull the trigger. So you have to wait. And this is a good pattern uh, because it makes you wait. And if you get in early, then you can get stopped out and then you're kind of feeling bad and you're mind isn't right. This one kind of makes you wait for it. And sometimes you have to pay up a little bit more. Uh, but uh, a lot of times it's well worth it. And just watching how many of these stocks do it, I think is going to be important. Uh, da, 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 bisect FIX? FIX? Uh, uh, Stitch Fix? Is that what this is? Yeah, Stitch Fix. Uh, a recent IPO, it hadn't been out here that long. Do, 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 do. Let's see if I can get uh, exactly when. Uh, range of apparel, shoes, accessories through its website, mobile app. Offers denim dresses, blouses, shirts, shoes, jewelry, and handbags for men and women. Um, this used to be known as the Rack Habit, changed its name to Stitch Fix in 2011. Um, yeah, they haven't been around that long. Uh, headquarters in San Francisco. Yeah, I don't know if there's a whole lot to say about this. Uh, let's go back and look at the IPO date. We'll be back in a minute. Uh, we'll wrap up the show with this. And anything else you get in, I got a couple of emails here, so we will get into those.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I got an email that just came in uh, and a couple others. We'll try to get them all taken care of. We're off uh, about 12 points on the S&P cash. Like I said, I think they're kind of do the best they can to, to uh, make a good retreat, not just all yell, throw their arms up and run, get shot in the back. Uh, they're going to they're gonna try to hang this up as long as they can. Again, those IPOs coming through, uh, probably the big one through the 10th. So I think we're going to continue to see kind of weakness based on selling to get cash up for some of those. And again, if you can't rally on the second day of the month, you're in big trouble because that is the best that fund money can do. Uh, crude oil cracking probably has a lot to do with it. Uh, Energy is about 30% correlated to the market, so always a big deal. And a lot of stocks looking like they're rolling, like I said, like Adobe earlier. A uh, question about Yeti Holdings. Uh, which is uh, a company that makes coolers, very expensive coolers. Uh, you know, I kind of wonder if they're made with diamonds or uh, gold and silver, anything, because they are massively expensive, but apparently they're very good. But uh, there are a lot of knockoffs. They're probably 90% as good uh, for 25% of the price, maybe around there. And what always disturbs me uh, is uh, that 
these kind of companies uh, like GoPro, where you get a camera, I've got one for $30 that works as good as a $200 GoPro, maybe 90% is good, right? But is it worth five times more, especially for something you might destroy? I mean, this isn't something you're going to be keeping in a foam box. Um, so I'm always worried about companies that can actually get moved out fairly quickly. Uh, again, uh, thanks for the email uh, from Pete about Yeti. Take a look at that one. Looks like a major failure. And, of course, if you what, what you want to be looking for is the lockup period. Uh, and what was the lockup date? 423. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Don't look high.